This video is about using inverse matrices to solve linear systems. And we'll be using a graphing calculator to do these rather than finding the inverses by hand. So matrices can be used to solve linear systems of equations. It's one of the reasons why we learn about matrices in an algebra course. So what you want to do first is make sure that your system is written in standard form. So both of these equations are written in standard form, x followed by y followed by the equal sign and then the constant, so that we can write this linear system in matrix form. In matrix form, we're going to put in a matrix the coefficients from the first equation and the coefficients from the second equation by x, y equals the two constants. So it's just writing in matrix notation means the same thing as a linear system. And now to solve any equation in math, we use opposite operations, right? Inverse operations. For example, if it said x plus 2, we would subtract 2 to figure out what x is. So we're going to use an inverse matrix here. Now, the notation for an inverse matrix looks like this. The original matrix with a negative 1 superscript means the inverse of the matrix. Okay? It doesn't mean 1 over the matrix. It doesn't mean an exponent of negative 1. It's just a notation that means inverse. We're going to multiply by the inverse of the matrix on this side, and whatever we do to the left side of an equation, we do to the right side of an equation as well. Now, there is a way to calculate the inverse of a matrix by hand, but we're not going to do that. It takes a lot of steps, and we have a graphing calculator at our disposal, and the graphing calculator will do the inverse for us. So what happens in the equation, the way it's set up now, is that a matrix and its inverse, when you multiply them by each other, will cancel out to become 1. So all that's left on the left side of the equation is the xy matrix. On the right side of the equation, you'll need to take out a calculator and multiply the inverse matrix times the constants, and this multiplication problem will give us the solutions for x and y. Now notice the order that I put these in. I had to put the inverse matrix first, multiply it by the constant matrix, so that the number of columns in the first matrix lines up with the rows from the second matrix. The way I had it written originally, you wouldn't be able to do that multiplication problem. But this is a multiplication problem you can do. So under this gray box, which I'm now going to slide out of the way, I see I show you on the calculator what it's going to look like when you type it in. So that's what it's going to look like. We have a 3, negative 4, negative 1, 2 matrix with the inverse negative 1 notation. And you could type that in as if it was an exponent. Multiplied by negative 5 and 8 in a matrix. And when you hit enter, it calculates negative 1, 2 as your answer matrix. So x, y equals negative 1, 2. And we can write our final answer like we usually do for a linear system of equations as an ordered pair. That's where those two lines would cross. So it's yet another way to solve a linear system of equations using a matrix. You can also use a matrix for a, a system with more than two variables. So this system has x, y, and z in it. It's got three equations. We're going to make sure they're all in standard form, which they are. Notice that the second equation is missing the y term. So when you fill in your coefficient matrix, you're going to have to fill in a zero for that missing y. So our coefficient matrix across the first row is a 4, negative 1, negative 1. Across the second row is a 6. Like I said, 0 for the missing y term, negative 1 for the z. And our final row is negative 1, 4, and 5. That is getting multiplied by an x, y, z matrix. And it equals the constants negative 20, negative 27, and 23. Both sides are going to get multiplied by the inverse of the 3 by 3 matrix. So that ultimately, x, y, z equals the inverse of this matrix. And it's important to show exactly what you're doing. Even though you're going to use a calculator for the final step, you should show which multiplication problem you're doing. So I can see that you're doing it in the correct order. So we're putting our inverse matrix, which is a 3 by 3, so it has three columns, by our constant matrix, which has three rows. And so when we do it on the calculator, we'll get that the solution for x, y, z, and we can write it as 
ordered pair, negative 4, 1, and 3. And you can always plug in your x, y, z values to the original equations to check if that works. And that is all.